<laughs> hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Gear and Beer. We're here at the beach house. It's a hot, hot August day. Good we for beer, good for beer. We had a land breeze, so needed plenty of these to cool down today. Uh, fishing in southern Maine, sort of Wells area, Drake Island this morning. Just have to start with a story. Was sunrise, fishing the end of the jetty at Drake's Island, if people know that. Saw a whole bunch of bait busting. Saw a couple of, uh, I think they were pilot whales, sort of porpoising. And then all of a sudden, about 100 yards out in front of me, whale breached, came probably halfway out, mouth wide open, bunker going everywhere, swallowed a whole bunch, left a huge wake. I've seen that out in a boat before, but standing on a jetty 100 yards from me, never seen that. It was pretty cool. Yeah, you know, when the old saying goes, you're hoping to catch a whale this <laughs> yeah. morning. It almost happened, right? <laughs> I was matching the hatch too on the fly, but that was not exactly what I was after. So, <laughs> so we got uh, Rising Tide Main Island Trail Ale today, which is one of our favorites, I think. Great summer beer. Um, Rising Tide Portland-based brewery. Um, this beer is um, an American ale uh, they've had for, I don't know how many years, Three, four, five years, something like that? More, I think more than that. Really? It's been okay. our favorite for a long time in the yeah. summer. Uh, American Ale, it's light on the ABV. It's 4.3 or something like that. A really hoppy and sort of not, it's not light tasting. I mean, it's refreshing and all the rest, but it's it's full full taste on it. It's got some citrus, a little bit of pine. So says the tasting notes. I can't yeah. quite taste the pine, but yeah. there's definitely citrus in there. Me either. I don't know about you guys, but I. it's kind of like, you you like what you like yeah and whatever this taste is we all like yeah we have for a while we put it on tap um, this month and have to say it's going it's fast. going quick yeah yeah, yeah it's not uh, anyone that stops by is psyched to have a little uh, bit of it uh, rising tide is a great local brewery in Portland one of the first in Portland although I, I should say first of the new you know there are a couple of sort of old-time breweries in Portland but Rising Tide sort of came along, established themselves um, down um, close to uh, 295, easy to get to. They got a great sort of outside scene going on. They just redid the brewery, so there's a New, cool. It's nice. I yeah. The other day it was really nice. Yeah, cool inside scene. Got a cornhole outside. They always got a food truck. There's a distillery right next door. It's true. If you're it's looking, a whole scene. looking for something harder than uh, beer, it's That's true. it's there. It's true. And one of the really cool things I think about this beer too is um, they donate some of the proceeds to the, what is it, the Main Island Trails Association. Association yeah. um, so the Main Island Trail, if you're not familiar with it, is um, a set of islands that have been interconnected uh, with a sort of trail that kayakers or canoeists um, can go adventure. It's pretty cool. Sailboat and motor boaters as well. They allow hiking, camping, depending upon the island. They're out to preserve the island, do a great job. Uh, you can find them online. I think it's M-I-T-A yeah, dot right. something is Main Island Trail. Yep. You can find Rising Tide online and click on their beer and read more about it. Yep. Um, as you can sort of see the can here, Rising Tide, you can see it. it is literally the coast of Maine. Um, so. It's uh, sort of advertising, giving money for a good cause, and uh, it's pretty cool. But when these cans come out, we're psyched to see them. Uh, they don't recommend that you uh, cellar it. So yeah. drink it when you get it. I, I have to say I'm not sure I've cellared any beer. It's like it shows up and we drink it. So yeah, this especially isn't... when it's on tap and yeah. it's 90 <laughs> degrees on the beach. So That's true. So, uh, so for gear, we've got two new items. Um, both from Orvis. Um, one is their new nippers, uh, their piano spring nippers, and the other is their pliers. So this would be uh, fresh water, uh, and that is what they call salt water. Though I have to say that I have used that a number of times, fresh water as well. And I think the nippers also um, are really handy for salt water. So. While labeled that way, I think you'll find that they're... Um, Whatever you prefer. Yeah, yeah, they're really useful. I, I think, 
I sort of like the nipper. Um, I am as as for those of you that uh, keep watching uh, gear and beer. I'm not the fly fisherman in the group, so having sort of nail clippers and nippers is not something that gear that I usually have. But I find that actually um, these nippers really sort of do a great job. We um, it to work on the leader um, on mono. They're not great on um, on braid. But not advertised as such either. Not so. Right. Yep. Yep. Right. So they serve a purpose. It serves a unique purpose, but it is really, really convenient. I don't know how you all work on your leaders and your mono. Um, for a long time, I tie it and then, you know, it's in the mouth, you know, biting off a corner of it, right. or you're sort of getting out your sort of larger tool to sort of trim it, uh, which is totally doable. But uh, if you're looking for a little sort of quick convenient moment that is yep. really useful. Yep. Um, both of these are made from uh, high grade aluminum, both made in the USA. So the same machine shop that the Mirage reels are made from. Uh, Mirage reels are really popular with them. These are made in the same shop. Um, these little nippers have got this cool little thing that sort of slides out and you can clear the eye of your fly. Here's a gurgler that I was just clearing the, uh, the eye from. Works pretty well. Um, the piano spring, as such, uh, is very springy. Replaceable little tips on here, that comes pretty standard. Um, these are sort of like um, an Able-esque, um, but they've got a little bit more leverage to them. This springs up, so it's a little easier. Um, my only criticism of these, and it's not really a criticism, it's a style thing, is um, when I'm freshwater fishing, I really don't like to wear super bright colors. And so if this is gonna go around my neck, is it really gonna cost me a fish? I don't <laughs> think so. Uh, but uh, I'm probably gonna replace the lanyard with something more natural colored instead of this bright high viz. Yeah, might've caught the whale today if you had. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thank God I had this on then. <laughs> So those are nippers. These are the, uh, they're new pliers. They've had pliers for a while, but this is a uh, uh, new from 2017. And I think it uh, premiered at the uh, IFTD down in uh, Florida. So great set of pliers. Um, uh, different than uh, any that we've used so far in that they have the curved handle. I don't know if um, you can see that. You can see that the sheath is curved and the handle's curved. And so it comes out and fits your hand um, with the curve. Re you know, sometimes you think uh, that you'd never guess that this is what you wanted, but when it when you put your hand on it and say, wow, that it just feels really feels good. It feels really nice. I'm used to all the other ones have just two straight arms that come out. Those are more ergonomic. Uh, they feel really good. They've also got a couple of bumps, so your fingers can sort of slide into place, so you're not um, just sort of sliding around on them. Again, all made in the U.S. Uh, sheet and uh, the um, players are made the U.S. The players have the usual um, the usual clipper portion that is um, uh, able to be sort of taken off and replaced when they get dull. Uh, it's a it's sort of a star Allen wrench that uh, is kind of common in your toolbox, so you can do it yourself. It also has the replaceable uh, player tips on it. Some of the sort of lesser brands that you buy sort of online or on the store you see them at the checkout counter at some of your fishing shops don't have any of the um don't have any of the replaceable tips yep. and they're almost pretty much throwaway versions when they get sort of beaten up and old yep the uh the sheath is leather uh it's not a mess sheath um the one i've just got two suggestions this is a brand new item for them so two suggestions one is uh, actually make that three. <laughs> One, I would love for this to be a clasp because um, sometimes uh, I want to put it on my belt without having to take my belt off and then put it back on so that would make it easier. Um, the other is... Um, There's probably some comment about taking your belt off and stuff that yeah. we can probably skip. But um, The other is I would love a bottle opener on this. Uh, just saying. Uh, and... Uh, how about um, a corkscrew? Too? Yeah, maybe a corkscrew. <laughs> And maybe a cheese, and an aerator and a cheese knife. Cheese knife would be good too. as well. <laughs> sort of this. Okay, leave the bottle opener. Out. All right, Swiss, <laughs> Swiss Army knife time here. We're gonna we're gonna set it up with everything. Um, Spatula. And my yeah. <laughs> my only observation um, about the quality of the build is um, 
Uh, I've been using these in salt a lot. Um, I wash all of my stuff with a hose after, um, and yet um, the tip of the lanyard here has already started to corrode a little bit. Um, may, so maybe it dry, didn't dry off a couple times after I washed it down, I don't know, but um, that's the only bit that over the summer has started to show a little bit of wear. Yeah, the um, and, and the blade has, um, has worked through sort of numerous cuttings. It is uh, one of the better blades and pliers sort of systems that we've used. Uh, you put the braid in there. I mean, as a as a spin fisherman, you know, I'm fishing all braid. You throw the braid in and you just clip it, and it cuts it. Uh, as opposed to uh, the other pliers, sometimes you put the braid in, you have to sort of pull on it and try to sort of strip it out of there. But right now, these you cut down on the braid and you actually hear a little clip go on the braid, which is awesome. And I know some people sort of have to double up, uh, folks that are fishing with braid, double up with scissors. So, you know, you got your clippers going on for your for your mono, you got your pliers, in case you get a fish or a big line and you have scissors, I mean, too much stuff going on. These actually seem to do everything. I mean, they clip, they'll clip find the leader, they'll clip the braid and they'll, uh, they'll pull the hook out of the, fish's mouth if you need to. Yeah, and on that, the uh, in addition, the curved handle, in addition to being ergonomic, also gives you a little bit of leverage. I cut a bunch of stripers um, on the ledges this morning and was amazed at just how easily I popped it out um, with their mouths. That was great. Um, yep. <laughs> so, the uh, the last thing that, um, that it's a little bit, um, for those of you that are, that are used to some of the other plier systems, you're not used to sort of the leather holder. I mean, some of the other plier systems are a uh, are a, sort of a Synthetic material mesh, mesh sort of something. thing, yeah. and they have you know that the sort of piece that you know velcros over right here, and you sort of to like get a in leatherman almost. Sort yeah, of to get there, into yeah. it, you got to rip off, pull out. Yeah. Um, while this doesn't have it, as you can see, um, it hasn't had any problem sort of dumping out yeah. sort of while you're using it. So you end up uh, being able to sort of sit sideways and work on the fish and things and not lose your, not lose it. Obviously it's got its lanyard, so you're not gonna get in trouble if you lose it, but it actually is pretty convenient not to have to sort of do the, you know, fish on one hand and pull up the, uh, you know, the Velcro on the other and try to get this out. Mm -hmm. I actually, with with one of them that I have that has the Velcro, it's actually worse putting it back in. I mean, mm -hmm. because you have to sort of get the Velcro out of the way, put it back in. So right. Right. a form-fitting leather is yeah. actually surprisingly nice. Yeah. Um, it also has got a drain hole in it. So if you're filling up with water, you're going to drain on out of there. I mean, at least they thought of that, which yeah. is great. That happened to me in the surf the other day. Yep. Yep. So no corkscrew, but everything else seems pretty good on this. Yeah. And we've enjoyed using it. And I will say, as Andy already said at the beginning of this, um, they're advertised um, in some ways as salt, but um, I took these up Atlantic Salmon Fishing with me, um, put on everything from six pound to 30 pound, built my leaders. We've cut wire with these. Uh, they've been great all the way. Uh, they're meant to work down to 7x is what they're advertised as, um, and I'm sure you'd have no problem with that. So, made in America product. Um, I really like buying made in America. So um, these are 250, uh, which for a comparable set of pliers from some other companies is a little bit lower price point, um, and I think you're getting a really good value here. Yeah, I like them very much. I'll use them um, as my go-to plier. I mean, I will. I'll replace out the ones I've been using and I'll use those. So, you know, cheers to Orvis and cheers to Rising Tide and yeah. making a great beer. So. Happy August, everyone. Thank you guys. We'll catch See you again soon. soon. Yeah.